All right, I had to temporarily zoom out for the next one. Number 17, yeah. Um, the area of a rectangle is this. The width is this. What is the, uh, what is the length of the rectangle, okay? Now, um, does everybody know what a rectangle is? <laughs> Just kidding, of course you know what a rectangle is. So here's a rectangle. They're saying that the area Okay, um, they're saying that this is the area. But we know that area is equal to length, forgot the T, um, length times width. Okay, that's area. So um, this looks like a job for factoring, okay? Because um, if I take that area and I factor it, it should factor down as length times width. And it's even easier than that, okay, um, because they already gave us the width, okay? So we are, we are factoring is what we're doing. Um, but we're told that the width is 2x plus 1. So that means the width here is 2x plus 1. So um, we just need to find the length. Okay, so look, we're factoring this. We're factoring 8x squared plus 8x plus 2. So what's the first step of factoring? Well, maybe we won't do that. Normally, we would pull out a GCF, and we'd go, oh, common factor of 2. Okay, and then that would be 4x squared plus 4x uh, plus 1. And then we go from there. Um, but we don't want, there's no extra number going to be out here. All right, we just want length times width. So this is the one time that we're not going to pull out the GCF. So it kind of makes me mad that they made it be one with, with the GCF at all. Just to confuse people. So anyway, uh, we're going to just stick with the original problem. So the first thing we do is uh, let's look at the 8x squared. And uh, we're going to ask ourselves what times what makes 8x squared. But we already have the 2. So this must be what? This got to be 4x, all right? Maybe I should do this part in a different color. Because this is what, what we were already given. Everything in blue was given. Now this is the new part. 2x times 4x, okay, would make 8x squared. Okay, same thing here. Um, looking at the 2, um, well, and we already have 1, so we're asking ourselves what times 1 makes 2? Well, obviously, this would have to be 2. Okay, not only that, but it has to be a positive 2. So this would have to be a positive 2 times a positive 1. Okay, now let's confirm that we get a middle of 8x. Now, inner, uh, this makes 4x. Okay, outer, that's another 4x. Together, that makes 8, so it does work out. Okay, so we just factored this. Okay, the area equals length times width. This is the area, and it equals this times this. Length times width. So guess what? The length is the part shown here in red. Okay, so this is the length right here. You could put a box around it. Or I mean, I'll just write it separately. Okay, so the length is 4x plus 2. Okay, because of that, length times width. You get it. Okay, number 18. The area of a rectangle is this. The width is that. What is the length? All right, it's basically the same problem again. Okay, area. All right, and this is the area is equal to length times width. Okay, so this area, now they gave us the width. So the area is going to equal the length times x plus 4. They gave us the width. So here we go again. Um, focus on the 3x squared. 
x times what will make 3x squared? Well, this must be 3x. 3x times x is 3x squared. Now look at the 28. 4 times what makes 28? 7. 4 times 7 is 28. And to make a negative 28, this needs to be a negative 7. All right, let's just double check. All right, the inner plus the outer should equal the middle. Inner, I've got negative 7x. Outer, I've got positive 12x. Together, that makes positive 5x. So we're good. So that means um, length times width. So this must be the length. So length is 3x minus 7. Okay, brilliant. That was number 18. Looks like I'm shaking my head. Uh-uh. Okay, um, what else? Okay, number 19. The area of a square is blah, blah, blah. What expression represents the length of a side of a square? Okay. The area of a square, all right? Well, you know what a square is, people. A square is a rectangle, but it's a rectangle that is the same on all four sides. Um, so the length has to be the same on both sides, okay? So that means it's going to be, it's going to factor down as the same thing twice, okay? All right, it's going to be like length times length. All right, it's got to be the same thing twice for this area. Okay, so let's just factor this thing. But since we know it's going to be the same thing twice, that's going to make it relatively easy. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So 36d squared. Um, 36, it has to be the same thing twice. So it has to be 6d times 6d. All right, that's the only way for it to be the same. 9. That's a perfect square, luckily. It has to be 3 times 3. Now, the inner plus the outer has to be the middle. Now, inner, I have 18. Hold on. Okay, 3 times 6. So, inner, I have 18d. Outer, I have another 18d. Now, this will make negative 36 if both of these are negative. Okay, negative 18 plus negative 18 is negative 36. So that means both of these will be negative. It also gives me a positive 9 because negative times negative is positive. Okay, so that's it. That means, you know, the length of both sides are 6d minus 3. Okay, so how do they put it? What expression represents the length of a side? Length equals 6d minus 3. Okay, number 20. Um, number 20, we're just factoring this. Um, see how short it is, okay? Um, we look for a GCF, there is none. We, um, you know, our next guess is to try to factor it, but the only uh, problems like this where the middle ha must be zero, that's why it's so short, there's no x terms. Um, the, this only worked when, uh, if, if, if only it was 4x squared minus 9. If that were the case, then we could just go, okay, 2x plus 3 uh, times 2x minus 3. Okay? Um, if it were negative, this is what it would be, all right? Because inner I'd have, whoops, inner I would have 6x, and outer I would have negative 6x, and they would cancel out. That's why there's no middle term. Um, but that gives me, of course, a negative 9, not a positive 9. And uh, look, the answer is this is unfactorable, okay? There's no way I can do this to give me... Um, a zero middle, 
which it is, all right, this is a zero x in the middle, there's no way to do it. It's unfactorable. I hope that's one of the options. It's prime. It is, in fact, prime. Now, if you were thinking, um, some kids will say, well, what about 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, uh, which would be b. What about that? Well, like I said, um, sure, 2x times 2x gives you 4x squared. And sure, 3 times 3 gives you 9. But the middle is supposed to be 0. Um, inner, I have uh, 6x. Outer, I have another 6x. If these are both positive, this is going to make 12x. Do you see a 12x here anywhere? No, you don't. So that, but this would give us a 12x. In fact, this would give us 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. It would not give us what we started with. So this cannot be the answer. All right? And in fact, there is no answer. So it is prime. Okay, uh, look, it looks like I have reached the end of this lesson. I hope this was helpful to you, and uh, I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.